I titled today's Neville Goddard Conversation, They Experience What You Imagine About Them. Now, I'd like to build upon our conversation we had on Thursday in regards to Your Invisible Power by Genevieve Beren. You know, she spoke about how when you have something that you imagine to be a reality, the facts in imagination, that if a person has doubts and they seem to identify with these doubts or shame, anger, frustration, etc., it could end up playing out as the theater in conversation with others. So what she had suggested is to see it to yourself, that that's the way that it is. Now, Neville, he says, taking up his cross, you will represent him to yourself as you would like to see him. And to the degree that you are self-persuaded, he will become it, even though he may never know what you did. What I've noticed in my consulting journey, relationships, all areas of my life in regards to communication is, in the earlier stages when I imagine someone to be how they truly are, I would start to say things to, you could say, try to convince them. What I recognize is that a lot of times, my doubts, my indecision, my fears and frustrations, for whatever the reason may be, which were not related to the fact of how they are in my imagination, would also seem to play out in conversation with them. And it would turn into unnecessary conflicts. As I continued to work with this information and released those inaccurate thinking patterns in relation to myself, in relation to them. What I find is that people show up and they say, this is my goal, this is my vision, this is what I desire. And I represent them in my mind's eye as that person right now. And as we've been discussing in our recent Neville Goddard conversations, people seem to change on their own. What they say, how they say, their body language, their voice tonality, what they're communicating to me seems to reflect exactly what it is that I imagine about them. We see this in relationships, leadership, etc. A person that is self-persuaded to the degree that reality is the way they imagine it to be plays out as others reflecting as the theater in what they say, their body language, behaviors to align with that person's reality. And Upon observation, we can identify what it is that they're imagining. For example, I have the DILTS levels here. We can look at aspects of their identity that is being revealed, their body language, how they represent themselves physically, and this may present some clues. As they're communicating, they present or they express their values and beliefs, holding clues of what they imagine or vision on the top. We also see their skills, their behaviors, the environments that they're in. I've done this for many years. In NLP, we call this modeling. We take someone who has produced a lot of success in their life, and we look at the various clues working with the DILTS model here, their environments, their behaviors, their capabilities, their values and beliefs, and different components in relation to their identity about themselves at a subconscious level at an identity level in relation to their vision. They seem to share a commonality. They have a vision, a goal, a definite chief aim, and they are self-persuaded that this is the reality, the fact in imagination, because it is. As we've discussed in our Nikola Tesla conversation, I'll put a link in the description to this video, that Nikola Tesla would go into his imagination and he would reveal the facts in imagination in his invention. And he would build his invention in his imagination, or we could say he would reveal his invention in his imagination with all its vivid nuance and accuracy. And as he had mentioned, that every time he expressed it, it always worked exactly like how it did in his imagination. The same is to be said about relationships. 
We want to look at how our own conclusions within, that which we are imagining, although a lot of times it could be subconscious or unconscious, is playing out as how others relate to us. Now, to keep this simple, we practice representing people in our own mind's eye in relation to the facts of imagination of how they truly are. Let's look at it from the very direct sense. That person wants to be represented exactly like how they desire to be represented. So you ask them the question, what are your goals? What are your visions? What are your desires? What do you want in life? They say it to you, I want to live this way. I want to do this. I want to have this experience. And all we do is say that's fact in our imagination to ourselves. We don't have to say anything to them. And we enter the state of mind that's one with that vision. And we notice what we say, how we say, when we say, why we say, what they say, how they say, when they say, why they say in both verbal and nonverbal communication plays out as a theatrical experience of a harmonious conversation from that premise. And so what happens is I've seen this many times and I see it more so today because we recognize it's the degree of our own self persuasion in relation to is some way, somehow they change. They show up the next time and they seem to be doing exactly what it is that they want to do. They're living where they want to live. Their behaviors, their capabilities, their values and beliefs appear to change to reflect what I had saw in my imagination, the vision of how they truly are. And what if for whatever the reason we don't see clues in the environment, the behaviors, the values and beliefs and identity that reveals the vision and for whatever the reason it's not presented in words of how they actually are. Well, this question right here, which was asked in Neville, holds a lot of insights. The question was asked, is it possible to imagine several things at the same time? Or should I confine my imagining to one desire? Might not be clear that the person is communicating it some way, somehow, of what they truly desire. And that's fine. He says, personally, I confine my imaginal act to a single thought, but that does not mean I will stop there. During the course of my day, I may imagine many things, but instead of imagining lots of small things, I would suggest that you imagine something so big that it includes all the little things. Instead of imagining wealth, health, and friends, imagine being ecstatic. You could not be ecstatic and be in pain. You could not be ecstatic and be threatened with a disposition notice. You cannot be ecstatic if you are not enjoying a full measure of friendship and love. Let's look at that. You could not be ecstatic if you are not enjoying a full measure of friendship and love. So as I represent the ecstatic feeling by imagining myself into an ecstatic feeling, by suggesting that I feel ecstatic now, what I notice is the conversation changes, the relationship changes and plays out to symbolically represent that ecstatic feeling within. So we can imagine it with our thoughts and we can imagine it with our feeling or we could feel thoughtfully or think feelingly at the same time. And so he says, what would the feeling be like? Were you ecstatic without knowing what happened to produce your ecstasy? Reduce the idea of ecstasy to the single sensation. Isn't it wonderful? And here's an uh, important distinction he makes. He says, do not allow the conscious reasoning mind to ask why. And I would say that this is the programming that a person has identified with that is not true and in harmony with how they actually are. Because as they let go of this programming and identify with the true and accurate thinking in relation to how they actually are, they will realize that the facts are in imagination and they won't look for five sensory causes. They realize the reality of what they see in imagination as the source and shall be the expression in the five sensory experience in relationship with others. He says, rather repeat over and over, isn't it wonderful? So the statement, isn't it wonderful or anything for that matter, whatever you imagine, however you say it, whatever you do, whatever you suggest to yourself in whatever shape or form, 
as it implies the feeling of ecstatic, you represent it in the moment, you feel it. And what is experience is reality rearranging environments, behaviors, capabilities, values and beliefs, identity in relation to yourself and thus reflected in relationship with others to reveal accordingly. How does this play out? Well, as I've mentioned many times, people show up saying the exact same thing that we imagine, revealed in their body language, in what they say, how they say, communication, subcommunication, etc. And also, they say the same thing from many different perspectives. So they'll say what you're saying, they'll say it differently, although it's the same difference. You'll notice this. This is very powerful for relationships, leadership. What we're looking for is harmonious relationships. One where we feel in flow, in conversation with a person. Reflect with me for a moment. Reimagine a time in your life where you had an interaction or conversation with someone and everything felt effortless. And it automatically expressed effortlessly in words, body language, behavior that seemed so intertwined with the other person. There was a harmony and the mental state you were in, we could call that ecstasy, ecstatic, flow, or deep stages of flow, autotelic. The conscious and the subconscious harmonized at one, at the same time. As we reflect regularly from the Kabbalion, everything is and isn't at the same time. All happening now, in the eternal now. This is what we call authentic way of being. And how do we do it? Well, we go back to the beginning here. Taking up his cross, you will represent him to yourself as you would like to see him. And to the degree you are self-persuaded, he will become it. Even though he may never know what you did. As in you never tried to convince him. You didn't tell him what to do. You represented him in their mind's eye as fact in imagination. Like Nikola Tesla would with his inventions. And you allow the changes to occur. Allow the subconscious mind to express the rest. Sometimes you hear me say this as surrendering to the vision realized. And if for whatever the reason we're not able to construct in our imagination how they actually are, or say unto ourselves something via auto-suggestion of how they actually are, then we go back over here. We capture the feeling. As he says, personally, I like to confine my imaginal act to a single thought, but it does not mean I will stop there. During the course of the day, I may imagine many things, but instead of imagining lots of small things, I would suggest that you imagine something so big that it includes all the little things. This will span as you live in flow, as you commit to ecstasy, ecstatic, and bliss, which is our true way of being in relation to the Sanskrit word ananda, which means bliss, and also in Sanskrit, satchit ananda, truth, consciousness, bliss. See, we can imagine wealth, health, and friends in relation to what the other person says, in relation to how they actually are in our relationships, etc. And we can also do the same thing by capturing the feeling of ecstatic now. We take the responsibility, 100% responsibility within. He says, you could not be ecstatic and be in pain. You could not be ecstatic and be threatened with a disposition notice. You could not be ecstatic if you were not enjoying a full measure of friendship and love. And thus reflected as them also having those experiences in relationship with you. And I noticed this. I've said this before. There are more people that are like me than I could possibly ever meet, which was an auto-suggestion that I made to myself back in 2008. And wherever I go, I'm surrounded by people that say the same thing or the same thing from many different perspectives. And we have a lot of fun and we have a lot of synchronistic conversations, mind-expanding possibility conversations because I have a fascination of seeing things from many different perspectives, many different ideas, many different philosophies, and people show up sharing with me their distinct philosophies. And there's inspiration and stimulation in conversation. And I feel high in these conversations. I feel ecstasy. I feel ecstatic in these conversations. I trust you've had these experiences as well. And all throughout these videos, I encourage 
because I believe it is a natural way of being. He says, what would the feeling be like if you were ecstatic without knowing what had happened to produce your ecstasy? Reduce the idea of ecstasy to the single sensation. Isn't it wonderful? And so suspend all judgment as to what is wonderful. Catch the one sensation of the wonder of it all, and things will appear to bear witness of the truth of this sensation. And I promise you, it will include all the little things, and in relationship with others, all the little behaviors, what they say, how they say, when to say, nuances in body language, voice tonality, communication, etc. And so let's deeply reflect upon this quote here as we conclude today's conversation with an auto-suggestion. He says, Taking up his cross, you will represent him to yourself as you would like to see him. And to the degree that you are self-persuaded, he will become it, even though he may never know what you did. So we don't have to convince anyone or tell people what to do. They represent it as a result of representing the fact of how they really are in our imagination, which is what they love, they desire, which is what we love and what we desire. And what we desire desires us back. So I trust you found this video to be helpful. Let's go ahead and conclude this with an auto-suggestion to further encourage. We say, I recognize my ability to represent others in my mind's eye, the facts of imagination of how they truly are. Reality is the affirmation in mine, and I'm able to capture it via my thoughts and the feeling of ecstatic in relationship with Satchit Ananda, which is how they truly are, which is how I truly am. And thus reality rearranges to reflect the true reality of how I am in being. If you would like a copy of this mind map, the link is in the description. Thank you very much for watching. I'll talk to you soon. Take care.